let's talk a little bit about, um, I mean, this wonderful uh, music school. I mean, there's many all over the world, but especially in the United States, there's this amazing musical school called the Gospel Church. And this is where people really learn to play music and sing music together every Sunday for events. And some amazing singers and players have come through. It's, it, do you think of it kind of like a, like, like a school as well, like, like for learning or teaching, or is it just really the experience of, of singing in church? I think it's a combination of everything. Um, first of all, you go to church. Most people go to church are Christians, so it's a lifestyle, you know, that we're, you know, the Bible say you got to not steal, not cheat nobody. So you got that. And then we have music. Bible says praise the Lord in Psalms. You got all of that. So, uh, and then you got a lot of great gospel artists. You got James Cleveland. You got... Uh, Thomas Whitfield, Thomas A. Dorsey, Mahalia Jackson, you got all of them great. And we all, a lot of singers and stuff, they want to sing like them, and, and we all get ideas from them, even the musicians. So, yes, it's, it is an opportunity to learn, and it's, it's also inspirational. It inspires you. It's an amazing energy what happens, I think, uh, every Sunday in a lot of these churches where everybody's singing together and playing and just like... Um, very, very spiritual in many ways. Yeah. Um, so you play, the music you play, how would you classify that? You play blues, jazz, funk, R&B, gospel, all of the above, classical even. Well, Mix them all together, you know, in whatever ways it comes to you, or how, how do you see that? Um. Well, I, I was, when I went to Japan, I was taught, all the guys told me, they say you have to play all styles, you have to play the keyboard or organ, you have to play it all on the same level, and most musicians don't do that. I personally like a lot of different styles of music, but if you were to classify me, I would say jazz, gospel, a little bit of soul. That's basically what I do. And then I kind of branch out, like I'm getting into the Latin stuff with Peter and, and everything like that. So what, what attracted you to jazz music then? Well, this is what happened. Um, I was, uh, I, when we went to ninth grade, we was in high school, so we got in the jazz band. And I liked the song, little, My Little Suede Shoes, Girl from Ipanema, A-Train. That was when I first was yeah. exposed to it. And then uh, we was all drummers, and, the, and this cat looked like a rapper. He said, let me play, man. He got up on the drums and played some shout music. <laughs> He was bad, and then he said, play something. He got on the piano. His name's Aaron Howard. He was playing some shout music, and that's what got me into the piano. But I like the jazz standards. I like the jazz chords, so I used to go to the mall. I met a lady named Annie Farnsworth, and she, she, she was just, I just looked over her shoulder like this, and I was trying to figure out what chords she was hitting and stuff like that. And, you know, it's a lot of, and in the church, you got Bernard Littleton, you got so many, Richard Turner, you got a lot of. So you're, you're basically self-taught, like autodidactic. You just pick up and learn, learn to read and just pick piece by piece and just put it together in the way that makes sense to you. That's pretty much what I was doing, yeah. hanging out wherever I could, guitar yeah. center, okay. asking questions, staying in the band room, practicing, and listening to tapes. I had a tape recorder in my pocket. I, I would always turn it on when I would be a, when I would hear something that was good. And of course, you know, I listened to the, the jazz station, KLO in eighty eight point one. What inspires you every day to get up and 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 play piano? I mean, is it like you drink something, have a coffee, and then go play play piano? What what's what's like your routine? Well, I really like music, so it's kind of like a to a kid wanting to play with a toy or video game. Like I used to really like playing video games, so um, that's that's pretty much how I did it. Uh, that's how I, that's how I feel. I go how I feel. I really like music. I like to play music. I like to you know, work on arrangements and work on right songs and that's that's pretty much what it is. I just it's something inside of me that says I gotta keep pushing. Because this is something I wrote in the description for the flyer is like, you know, when when I hear you play every time before and like today, it's like 
you know, it's like you and the piano, you know, it sounds a little bit cliche, but it's true. You become kind of one, you know, it's just like channeling through the piano, you know, and music comes out, you know, it's just a, just a fantastic experience. Um, and this is a question um, that I like to ask musicians. And it's this experience of when, either in the middle of composing, you know, alone, or, or even on stage like today, when you're playing a song and you just go off, you just kind of leave this world as, as we know it, as we're speaking to each other right now. And you're not even, even your mind, it's just like everything about you just kind of drifts off into like a place. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Is there any way to describe that? Like what kind of place that is or what kind of feeling or what's your experience with that is? Like where, where, where do you go? when you, as they say, kiss the muse, you know, when, or when the muse kisses you, when you're off into that land of, of musical tones? We call that the zone. The zone. Yeah. yeah, we call that the zone. Yeah, yeah, that describes it. Right, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> um, what it is, is what we was talking about earlier about inspiration and stuff. Uh, it's like... It's like listening to a, well, I don't know if people appreciate it no more, but maybe 10, 15 years ago, I used to be excited when I get a Gene Harris record, a new one that's just released or something, and I just couldn't wait to get home to hear it because I liked it so much. And then, you know, I would put, I would put, I would turn it on and you hear that, you know, be like, wow. So I'm trying to do that. That's what I like. You know, it's a lot of little things that I like. So I try to play what I like. It's the same as listening to some, uh, a, a CD that you like. So I'm trying to duplicate it live when I'm playing and put it into what, what I think sounds good. I'm mixing all these inspirational things. You got Herbie. I, got, I like Jerry Allen. I like all my friends. You know, I got friends like Bernard Lilton. Uh, uh, my uh, the musicians here in China, all the musicians, Alec Havoc, all those guys, the Jay Z guys, I put all that in the bowl, mm. and I mix it up and I play what I, I'm, I try to write my own song, if you will, something that, ex- yeah. that inspires me to play. That's and it and it comes out different every time, right? Every time, <laughs> every time. It's, <laughs> that's that's the jazz element, the improvisation. I, I, one last related question, and then I'd love you to play another one. Um, it's just one of these kind of silly interviewer questions, but is your p- piano for you more like a paintbrush or a rocket into space? Well, I, I would say most artists would say both because sometimes you, you, you're, you're painting a picture and sometimes you go, you're dynamic, you bring the song up. Kind of like the way I started, I started off soft and then we went up and then we came back down. So is that, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, Something yeah. Like that? you can paint with a rocket as well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs>